Hey guys, so welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. They suggested I react to um, the greatest prophecy in the Bible about the coming of Prophet Muhammad. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Isaiah 42 is the most powerful reference to Prophet Muhammad in the Bible. We will see why I say that. So this is a long chapter. I'll just give you some highlights. It says, Hen abdi bikhiri ratsa nafshi. Behold my abd, whom I uphold. Right? And this is the primary title of the Prophet وسلم, in the Quran. Subhanallah asra bi abdihi. Fa ila abdihi ma awha. And when the Prophet وسلم, would hear these ayat, he would begin to weep that Allah is calling him Abd. So here, behold my Abd, the same word in Hebrew, whom I uphold, my chosen one, and whom my soul delights. And of course, the Prophet وسلم, is Al Mujtaba, he is Al Mustafa, Al Mukhtar. It continues. Nafati uh, Ruhi alive, I shall put my ruh upon him. A spirit of revelation, mishpat le goyim yotzi. He shall bring law and order to the goyim. The goyim are Gentiles. The word in Arabic for Gentile is ummi, right? So nabi al ummi, al ladin yatbi'un al rasul, al nabi al ummi. Those who follow the apostle, the unlettered prophet, the Gentile prophet. These are possible. The motherly prophet. All of these meanings are possible. All these meanings are prevalent. Um, and then it continues. Very interesting. He will not raise his voice in the marketplace. There is a hadith in the Shema'il, our mother Aisha, anha, she says about the Prophet because again, nobody knows the husband like the wife. She says, uh, that he didn't even raise his voice in the marketplace. It continues, now we have iltifat in the Hebrew text, we have sudden change of person. Now God is speaking directly to this abd, to this, this servant of God, and he says, فَأَتَنْكَ لَبِرِتْ am." I will give you as a covenant of humanity. So this prophet is, again, this abd is alamiya, he's universal. قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ جَمِيعًا Surah Al-A'raf 158, the ayah that we heard, one of the ayahs that we heard at the beginning of the event. Le'or goyim, it says, as a light of the Gentiles, nurul ummiyin, a light of the Gentiles. This is a construct phrase, mudaf, mudaf ilayhi, construct noun, absolute noun. Just skipping around. Shiru la adunai shir khadash, sing unto the Lord a new song sacred song, a new scripture, a new language possibly. Continuing, ah, who will sing this new song according to the text? It says the islanders, the gentiles, right, the goyim, the iyim, the islanders, the goyim, the gentiles, and then it says, khatsarim teshev qaydar, and the villages that Kedar inhabits. Kedar. Who is Kedar? Kedar is the second son of Ismail alayhi salam, according to Genesis. His name is mentioned eight times in the Hebrew Bible. Jesenia says the rabbis call all of the Arabians universally by this name. And Leishan Qaydar, Lisanu Qaydar, is called, is used of the Arabic language. The Jews refer to Arabic as Leishon Qaydar, the tongue of Kedar. So this Evid, he will be uh, accepted. They will sing his new song. Who will? The Islanders, the Gentiles, and the Arabs. Another proof text of this, Ezekiel 27, 21. It says, Arav vekol nasi e Qaydar, Arabia, and all the princes of Kedar. 
And then it continues here, Isaiah 42. Yorunnu yoshve sela. Let the inhabitants of the rock sing. Sela, this is very enigmatic. Nobody really knows what this means. Some believe it's you know, Sela is just sort of what the Bible calls a generic sort of house of God, a fortress, a tabernacle of God of some sort. Some say it's Petra in Jordan. There is a mountain in Medina called Sela, by the way. There's a mountain in Medina. It's mentioned in the Hadith. Wallahu alam. Continuing with this Isaiah chapter 42. They will be greatly ashamed, those who trust in carved images, those who say to molten images, Atem Eloheinu, you are our gods. So this servant, this evid of God, stands as a bulwark against idolatry. And then it continues to call him Avdi, my servant, Malaki, my messenger. It calls him Mashullam, Mashullam. Like the perfect or sound one, Evid Adonai, Abdullah. These are some of the qualities mentioned in the entire chapter. When you read the chapter, and if you know the life of the Prophet of Islam, Prophet Muhammad, you will see him in this prophecy, no one else. Why? Because it specifically mentions his location. Specifically. It's not even vague. It is very specific with all the qualities he came with. He was the chosen one. His law. The Hebrew word there in the prophecy is the Torah. And this is a Torah after the Torah of Moses. And no Israelite prophet ever claimed to have brought another Torah. This is a new law, which this prophet, this prophet king will bring. Christopher North is a biblical scholar specifically specializing in the book of Isaiah. In his commentary on this particular passage, in his book, Suffering, Suffering Servant in Deutero Isaiah, Suffering Servant in Deutero Isaiah, published by the Oxford University in the University Press, he stated that this judgment is something like the Arab deen or the Arabic uh, 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 religion or Islam. This is what he said, Islam. He used the word Islam. So this new law came with no one else but Prophet Muhammad is a comprehensive law. Islam is a very comprehensive way of life. He came, he will come as a light for Gentiles. He will put idol worshippers to shame. And he has something to do with Kedar, where the people of Kedar live. Kedar was the second son of Ishmael. According to the book of Genesis chapter 25, verse 13, Kedar was the second son of Ishmael, a direct ancestor of the Prophet of Islam, Prophet Muhammad, according to the biography of Prophet Muhammad himself. So Kedar was in Arabia. Prophet Muhammad was a direct descendant. This particular passage mentions the location directly and it mentions the Mount Sela, which is in Medina. And he will triumph against his enemies and he will be a messenger of God. All of these things put together, if they do not fit Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, then they do not fit anyone else in the history of humanity. Thank you very much for listening. Let's have a look at Isaiah, the book of Isaiah in the Bible. In the 29th chapter, in the 12th verse, there's something remarkable here. And it says, the Nitan, and this is perfect with Vav consecutive, so this is explicitly future. The Nitan Hasefer al Asher Lo Yada Sefer. And the book, the book, the revelation, scripture, Sefer al Kitab. The book will be given to one who does not know letters. Le Mor Qara Naze. And it shall be said to him, Qara, it is the exact cognate of Iqra and he shall answer Lo Yadati Sefer I don't know a book I am unlettered Ma'anna Biqari This passage is remarkable First of all the Prophet Muhammad is referred to as the unlettered Prophet the unlearned Prophet the Prophet Muhammad may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him couldn't read and he couldn't write he did not study scripture not like Jesus who was brought up amongst the rabbis and even at a young age he amazed people with his learning of the law. So Jesus, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, was learned in the law. But Muhammad lived in Arabia, a pagan land. People did not know about the scripture except for a few people amongst the children of Israel, some Jewish tribes who lived there. Otherwise, they were ignorant of that and the Prophet Muhammad himself was not learned in the scripture and he's called Ummi. Ummi means not learned. 
And so it's exactly as the Bible is saying, the book, and one of the names of the Quran is Al-Kitab, the book, is delivered to him who is not learned, who is Ummi, saying, read this, read this, in Arabic, Iqra, read this Iqra, the very first verses that God revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, as every Muslim knows, what was it? Iqra, read. The angel Gabriel comes to the Prophet Muhammad, while the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is meditating on the mountain, the Jabal Nur, the mountain of lights overlooking Mecca. He's sitting there meditating. He has escaped the troubles of Mecca, the polytheism. He goes there to think about God, about creation, about humanity. And it is there that he receives on the night of Ramadan in his 40th birthday, he received the angel Gabriel comes to him, says to him, Iqra. And the Prophet says, I can't read. Again, the angel Gabriel says, Iqra. But this time he takes the Prophet and squeezes him. And again, the Prophet says, I cannot read. Now the angel Gabriel squeezes him even more tightly and says, Iqra, read. The Prophet says, what shall I read? So this is exactly what happens. The Prophet says, I am not learned. I cannot read. How can I read? I'm not of those who can read. This is exactly how it is mentioned in Isaiah 29, 12. Check it out for yourself. Throughout this video, I've been trying to think what's wrong with a messenger of God or any normal human being, being that actually preaches the word of God, a human being that's going to preach humanity, a human being that just wants togetherness, a human being that wants um, to uphold the law and um, unite everyone, a human being that's preaching one God. What's wrong with believing in such a person? It really doesn't make sense that some people go out of the way to um, to say all sorts of things, not to believe in something. Sometimes look at what the Bible is saying and look at what um, the Quran says as well. I, I always say that you can't learn something if you never know what either of the books uh, talk about, including other books that belong to um, other religions, uh, the Torah and whatsoever other books exist. You can't speak on something or talk about something or even believe in something if you've never experienced it, read about it, gotten knowledge about it, or even just experience the people that believe in it. This is a new world where we can download all these things on our phones. We can go to YouTube and find videos. There's many blog posts. It's really up to us to look into certain things in life. Compare the texts and see where it leads you. Otherwise, a big, shout, a big shout out to the person that suggested this. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up. But before you do that, if you have something to say, feel free to comment in the comment section below. And I'll see you in my next reaction video.